Hello guys, this is Christian from Germany. Today I have an Eastern special for you. And the variation I'm gonna talk with you today is the English attack for white in Sicilian Nydorf with the pawn on e6 from black. It starts with pawn to e4, pawn to c5. We have knight to f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, attacking the e4, knight to c3, defending. And after pawn to a6, we know that this will be a Sicilian knight of variation. And our move is bishop to e3. This move keeps us flexible. And from here, black's next move will show us what variation we will gonna choose against him. In this position, I want to mention that knight to g4 is not a big deal for black because you can simply play bishop to the g5 and after pawn to h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop to g3. And now it's not clear what black's king is doing this game. More or less, he has to stay in the middle of the board and this gives black only a risk. So I think at move number eight, it's not a big deal for black to play knight to the g4. By far the most often played moves and also the theory moves are pawn to e6 and pawn to e5. Only by the way, I'm gonna show you what can happen after pawn to e5. After this move and for this move, I have covered an extra video for you, which is called new system against Cecilia Neidorf in the English attack. Only by the way, for those of you who don't watch this video, I'm gonna show you a few moves and then you can uh, look if it is interesting for you. After that, I prepare retreating the knight to the b3. And then we have bishop e7, then the secret move pawn to h3, stopping any knight to g4 ideas. And after bishop e6, this is the sign to play f4 immediately. Then we play queen to e2, castle on the queen side, and we have a very instructive, a very interesting and exciting game with white. This only, by the way, what can happen after pawn to e5. But in this video, we're gonna concentrate for the very strong move and solid move pawn to e6. After pawn to e6, now we play the typical move for the English attack, which is pawn to f3. And here starts our standard position where we're gonna talk about. The most often played moves here are pawn to b5, which is by far the theory move, and bishop to e7, which is a very logical move. And these two moves very often lead to the same positions, I have to say. But before we look at these very important moves, I have to tell you why knight to c6 is not a good move for black. Then we have queen to d2, and uh, we can look at both of these moves, what can happen maybe bishop to e7, we can simply castle on the queen side, we have queen to the c7, then we have pawn to g4, attacking black's king side. And it's not clear how black is gonna play in this game. Maybe knight captures, queen captures on d4, and castle on the king side, but then we have a very open king side and a very dangerous game for black's king. Let's go a few moves back, maybe Black tries to counter in the center with pawn to d5, but this is also not really a good idea because we can castle on the queen side and after the following continuation you will see why this is not really strong. We have pawn captures, knight captures and so on. And at the end of the day we can see that white is ahead on development, black has two isolated pawns and white has only one isolated pawn. All in all we can say that white is slightly better. After these examples I hope you know how to manage knight to c6 move from black. And now we have a look at the theory move and this is pawn to b5. After pawn push to b5, I have one thing to mention. Please do never play the move pawn to a3. The computer likes this move soon or later in these variations. But I found out that this is a blunder from the computer from Stockfish. I played many games, I analyzed many games with the move pawn to a3 and always is a mistake in my opinion. So I cannot recommend to you to play soon or later the move pawn to a3. Please do not do this. Better is to play the move queen to d2 because this keeps you flexible, this keeps the pawn structure on the queen side healthy. 
Okay, now we're gonna have a look at two moves, knight bd7, which is the better move, the main move, and the pawn push to b4. You have to be prepared for both of them. There is one very important thing you have to know after the pawn push to b4. Where is your knight going? The answer is later in the game it's better to play knight to a4 because later on the uh, light square bishop from black is on b7 and if you play now knight to a4 he can remove the knight with bishop d7 and bishop takes the knight on a4. That's the reason why early in the game you should play knight to e2. This keeps your structure flexible and you can see this after a few moves. Maybe bishop e7 and g4 and now you have very easy and infecting plan. You castle on the queen's side and now you keep pressure on the king's side with pawn to g5. Let's continue with the main line knight bd7. And against this we start immediately the pawn push with g4. And we're threatening pawn to g5 because then this knight has terrible position and not really future in this game. So he forcefully has to stop it with pawn to h6. And then we just castle on the queen's side and reached a very critical and important position. The only games in the online database I can found are with bishop b7 and the pawn push to b4. And the funny thing is, in both lines our trick works perfectly. At first we look at the most played move and the very logical move which is bishop to b7. And whatever he plays in this move we just play pawn to h4 and increase our attack on the king's side. Soon or later black has to search the counter attack in the center with pawn to d5. And now pawn to d5 is the sign to play our star move that you have to keep in mind. And the star move here is bishop to h3 with a very deep and infecting idea. In the first moment it seems to be a positional blunder for white because the e4 pawn is attacked three times and only defended two times. But the star move, the key move, bishop to h3 creates a very positional infecting trap. And now I show you that. D captures on e4 and here comes the counter attack directly with pawn to g5. He has to react with pawn captures on g5, pawn takes on g5. This knight on f6 has to go away and instead he will lose a piece. So knight on d5, then we exchange the knights, knight takes, bishop takes and now actually here you can see the purpose behind our star move bishop to h3. The purpose is pawn to g6. And now he's completely busted because the pawn structure from black is completely collapsing. He cannot do anything. The best move, and this is really sad from the computer, is to uh, give the exchange with rook captures on h3. And you can see how bad black's position is. You can give this check, you can recapture the rook, and black's king is open. Let's go a few moves back. Here I promised you that our trick also works after pawn to b4. And yes, it does. So I said to you knight to a4 is the best square for the knight when the light square bishop from black cannot come to d7 and attack this knight. So knight a4 perfectly. Then the game continues with bishop to b7. Now we continue with our standard plan pawn to h4. And we're just waiting for the counter attack in the center from black. We're just waiting for the move pawn to d5. And when d5 is played, I hope you remember, we play our star move, our key move, bishop to h3 with the big idea. Like before, the pawn on e4 is attacked three times and only defended one time here because the knight on c3 is not more here. So let's see what will happen after d captures on e4, no matter, don't care about this pawn, we just play the counter attack with pawn to g5. After h takes, h takes and knight to d5, we can also follow our plan like before. We can also shatter the pawn structure from black with pawn to g6 and this is completely crushing. He cannot go away because now we can just 
capture the pawn on e6, this is losing, he cannot take, we can also capture e6. The best move from the computer also in this position is rook captures on h3 and give the exchange and I think this is really sad for black. So guys, I hope you liked this trick. This was my own way to play against the Sicilian Knight of E6 variation with the English attack. On top of this video, I will present you a very cool and instructive game between two online players on Lee Chess. This game inspired me a lot and uh, I think it's very funny and interesting to watch this game. The game starts on uh, move seven with bishop to e7, which is a logical move. Please lean back and enjoy.